a lot of things that happen on Rampage leads up to uh, what happened with, uh, you know, the fall off of Full Gear. So, I want to talk about that, especially with one of the greatest segments that AEW has ever had uh, when it comes to, you know, uh, promo packaging. So, Rampage is past Friday. Obviously, I'm late on getting it up, but, you know, it's it, it'd be hard sometimes on, on, like, these Friday shows, the SmackDown and the Rampage stuff. What was uh, Friday's day? Do you remember? No, I don't. I think it was the 5th. I think it was the 5th. Okay, so on this episode of Rampage, we had John Silver taking on Adam Cole Bebe. We had the, the, the stare down between Eddie Kingston and CM Punk. And then we had, uh, you know, the TBS Championship match. We had Red Velvet taking on... Uh, who's taking on? Uh, damn, who was that? Oh, the bunny. My bad. And uh, then we had also Dale, uh, Brian Danielson taking on Anthony uh, Bowers of the Acclaim. So it's Friday, and you know what that means. So uh, we, we kick off Rampage. Uh, uh, Brian Danielson comes out, and then we get the Acclaim coming out. Max Caster comes out, and he, the only reason why... That there was even this part of the match is because he wanted to take the, take the that, that line of when he was doing the rap and he says that I don't have the full rap here in front of me, but he does come up with the line saying that uh God, what did he say? Uh I drop you know say something about I drop you know say you lose more I, I, I end more careers than your father in law or something like that. Mm-hmm. God, what was the line? I wish I had the line. I don't have. I pulled up the wrong thing. It, it it doesn't have. It doesn't have the rap on there. Do you happen to have? No, I don't. Okay, shit. All right. Well, that go guys. What to check the record? It was it was a sick burn. So, uh, but it, I thought it was we match Cassidy in the matchup, but it was it was an Anthony Bowen. So they, they had a match up. And it was, uh, it was a pretty decent match. You know, good show for Anthony Bones and stuff like that. And, you know, the show the Atlantic actually could be uh, pretty good wrestlers. They also hit the backstrop, uh, the Bones over the top rope onto Caster. And then they also uh, uh, off the ring post. And, and then he he uh, hit, hit a cross by and goes back in and hits the missile drop kick. And then um, they also grabs Bones' arm and began stopping on his head, which that movie looking so devastating. And then uh, he, he put the LaBelle lock in, and then Bowens taps out. So, that's, 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 that's all it was. It was just, it, it was just really a, a throwaway matchup, really, because we everybody came to Rampage to see the face. The, to, huh? the, match, was, the match was just basically because uh, Anthony Bowens and Max Caster called Tony Khan a, a, a terrible boss. Oh. He said, oh, since I'm so terrible, how about you fight Brian Danielson? That's all that punishment that's, right there. <laughs> yeah, so that's the reason why. Okay. Oh, well, you had to get to it somehow so you can use that line. So then we get CM Punk versus, versus Eddie Kingston. I'm a huge Eddie Kingston fan. I know how Eddie Kingston can be on the mic. I've seen Eddie Kingston in the House of Hardcore. I've seen Eddie Kingston on Impact. Even though he didn't talk too much of Impact. And then uh, we see how CM Punk can do. So they was like, Tony Khan was in the back of both of them. He said, look, we got 10 days. To sell this matchup. Go ahead. Do y'all. And boy did they deliver. So. Uh, see if Paul comes out and says. Look I'm going to be going face to face with Eddie Kingston. So I like to invite him out. Kingston music comes on. But Kingston doesn't come out. And then. Uh, after this music stop, Kingston comes out storming out. Oh and you know. Like I don't need no music. Uh, he said you want an apology. Answer me when I'm talking to you. You don't like that. And then uh, Punk was like, you interrupted me. 
And they said, oh my God, yes, I interrupted the great CM Punk. Oh my God, I'm so sorry the fans didn't get Punk against Orange Cassidy, but I was home getting tested. I felt sick and I was going to tell everyone, uh, you know, because you know, I, I didn't want to affect my friend because I didn't want to make sure I had COVID, so I went home and did the right thing, whatever the case may be. Uh, but I, I'm going to tell you the truth about you, though. This man was once a hero of mine. Guys like him, Samoa Joe, Homicide, Amazing Red, shout out to House of Glory. And uh, he said, guys like that on the independence like that inspired me. But you, low life, you judged me. And he said, I came to the locker room. And he said, all you did was judge me because, uh, because I didn't become friends with the booker. Because I like to eat house fat. Because I like to eat a little bit. And then... Uh, <laughs> See, Punk was like, look, look, I hear a lot of baggage right there. I wasn't just, you know, the one who judged you because anybody the one who judged you. It wasn't me. It was Joe. It was Homicide. First of all, who the hell is Joe to judge about fat people? Uh, it no, was hom- judge about his work rate. His work rate, yeah. Uh, it was Homicide. It was Danielson. But we judged you because we held you to a higher standard. You're the one who fell short of that mark. <laughs> You, you 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 can blame a guy like Danielson for beating you in a tournament, and, and you can walk in and back and blame me, and I'm the one who saw greatness in you 15 years ago, but I'm a fool for holding you to that standard now because you're a bum. CM Punk got booed for calling him a bum. Mm-hmm. And so Eddie Kicks is like, look, I, I'm a bum. Nobody wants you here. The whole locker room is afraid to say it, but not me. Stop, the, stop smirking. Like, like you did to me the other day, or I'll smack it off your face. Why don't you fight me on the 13th at full gear? Then <laughs> see if Punk comes out talking about some fight Eddie Kicks at full gear again. Full gear is a little bit high for the bar for you. I was thinking more like elevation or dark warrior speed. I was like, oh shit, we who, who, we getting there. And then he and then Kicks is like, you're a coward. Fight me, fight me, fight me. You know what I'm saying? At full gear, you know what I'm saying? Because with a bum main event full gear, which he did main event last year. And then Puck said, I'll see you on the 13th. And you thought it was over. But the kicks just said, I don't care about winning at full gear. I care about beating you. So you go, he said, so you can quit quit again for another seven years. As soon as <coughs> that seven came out, CM Punk hit butted him. And they started brawling, going back and forth, hitting each other. They had one of those, the first time we had to get the locker room out to break apart a brawl. Then the usual, they pull CM Punk away, and kicks it goes. That's the only thing I didn't team. like about it. Say what? That's the only thing I didn't like about it. Okay, hold on. Uh, then, then of course, they pull Kingston away. Then CM Punk jumps up on it. So it was a back and forth type thing. So uh, that was it for the segment. So tell me why you didn't, you didn't like that part. Nah, I just don't like. I don't. The pullaways are just not needed all the time, you know. Well, I'm. I'm, 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 I mean, you, 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 I, I, I do understand having somebody need to break them up. They don't even need. They don't even need. Do they? They, they didn't even need to get physical. Oh, but what you? No, oh, come on now, because you're not gonna say those sly remarks like that, and then all of a sudden you ain't gonna hit nobody. You, you gonna say you go ahead and quit for another seven years, and you ain't gonna hit them. It's either you. It's I don't. I I think it should have been you. Either be like, all right, I'm gonna see you at full gear, or just hit your finisher. That's all. Like I, I didn't need. I I don't. I don't. No, because the brawl because... is just not. I I I just can't see CM Punk and and it, like, being in a brawl. Like, Eddie Kingston, of course. CM Punk just don't. It, like some people just don't need to be in the brawl in a pull apart to bring out the whole locker room. CM Punk is not one of those people for me. But this man's from Chicago, okay? Yeah, and this man's also in the UFC. You see so how that happened. Say what? He was also in the UFC. So you mean to tell me it's a believable pull apart? Prime. You are looking dead too. Cause I'm like, cause you saying, all right, so you're saying somebody hits their finisher. So that means somebody looks weak going into this thing. If CM Punk just hit, hit, hit Honestly, Eddie with the pull go- apart, I, I don't know. If, right. if, if, so if CM Punk just hits Eddie Kingston with the go to sleep, all right, he talked all this shit. He get knocked out like that. Then what the fuck? Can, then he maybe he should can, be on dark you can, elevation. You can poke poke somebody in the eye. You can low blow him or whatever. You, you can cheat. It's, it's called a, a you can, fight. It's called it, it's called it's called a fight. Or they, well, it, I'm gonna just tell you, I don't I don't like brawls because I, for one, WWE made me tired of seeing it. So I just hate seeing brawls now. That's the only reason. Out of all the brawls WWE did, 
I probably like five out of five hundred. That's why I don't like the brawl. Look, I like the brawls when it's necessary. If you got a raging feud going, that you know pe- that people go go talk some shit on it because see the way. The way you're saying how it should have finished is how... So, okay, explain to me. Did you like how Roman Reigns and John Cena's promo, the first one, when his build-up to No Mercy ended? How did it end? Well, because according to the podcast that you said it on, remember, John Cena castorated the fuck out of Roman Reigns, and then Roman Reigns was standing there. He took it. Yeah, he should have hit his finisher. That's what I'm saying. But it, see, what I'm saying, if he hit the Superman punch or the spear on that, it's like, okay, Cena not going to fight back? If he hit a spear, you're not doubt, to quote unquote. But that makes Cena look, it's like, okay, you, you can't How does that somebody... make Cena look, it, it can just make you seem like, a, oh, I got you. You can't, you can't just out outsmart somebody? Now, were you talking the most, were you talking shit like that? Cena was talking the most trash. And you mean to tell me if he would have got speared, that Cena would have looked weak? Because Cena should have seen it coming. He could have been you, talking to the crowd. Cena he, really was not, been he, was, doing he was not talking to the crowd. He was talking to Roman. But I'm saying, if you want to do it to Cena, you know how when Cena wins a promo about it, he'd be looking to the crowd like, all right, y'all, I'm going to do the rapper do, okay. throw the fingers up. He could have been celebrating and Roman hit him. Yes, that's what happens when you do it with heels. Like such as... Remember when The Rock was talking talking the shit to Goldberg, and then Rock started talking to the crowd. That's what a he. That's what the heels do. They turn around, they but, let oh, the guard but, down. Goldberg speared them. But I'm saying that could be an easy finish than a brawl because. But a brawl, just like I just, I maybe I would like it more if they didn't do what they always do. Maybe that's what it is. And look, I just I hate to pull apart, and then one person gets away. And then they then they okay. pull them apart again. Then the other person. The, I will. That's the part I, I will give you that. That is recycled too much. That's I will the part what that. I'm talking about. I a regular brawl is cool with me. All right. I don't really the regular brawl is would be cool if they just ended it there and just split them up, not the, them going back and forth from who, who can break from security. That's why I'm, I'm talking about it. If it was just a brawl, then we're cool. Brawl separate them. All right. Cool. But the, the going back and forth is the part where I really don't like. Me personally, is I would have liked it if I would like to see a brawl. Because like I, said, I, I enjoyed the whole segment, but I would like to see a brawl where it it's, they treat it like actual street fight. Like I'm just grabbing shit off the announcer's table. Like I'm hitting you with Byron Sexton's Mountain Dew bottle. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I, mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm sitting there. And clothes are getting ripped. It's like like you look like you're in an actual fucking fight. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And to the point, it's like okay, these guys are like to the point where it's like you you, you almost think like they're going off script. We gotta. I I would have liked if it was like the one of, of Tyson and Austin when Stone Cold had that person. He thought it was Mike Tyson. He just started like beating him up. <laughs> well, because <laughs> that was funny. That. that that but I but I'm saying but, he, but, but see, really see, here's the thing he though Tyson. Mike didn't get physical because Mike know if he hits if he hits Stone Cold a rat. But that's well we can't I'm just talking about the way that it was how it looked like they were like it just was more real looking that's all. I just hate to pull I just hate to pull away and to come back and to pull it that's that's just I just really hate that that's all. I got you. Like I said, if it, me personally, I, I really enjoyed the segment, but I'm just saying, if it could have been done differently. You mean to tell me CM Punk was about to pull away from 10 people? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you're trying to tell me? Look, I'm saying, it could, if, if you want to make it, you, you, we can make arguments if it could have been more well executed, whatever the case may be, because that, that whole pull away and jumping and stuff like that, that has been recycled to death, so I get it. Yeah. Uh, That's the only part, no, like, the, I, I honestly would not have cared if it was a brawl, just not to pull away. Okay. Oh. Tony Schiavone interviews Christian Cage at Jurassic Express, and they said they want a, a match with the Super Click at um, Full Gear, Falls Count Anywhere. So now we get the uh, TBS Women's Championship first round, and we get the Bunny taking on Red Velvet. 
Jay Cargill was at ringside with Smart Mark Sterling. That's the name of that guy. Uh, the bunny needs work. Just, uh, you, you think know? so? Both of them, her and Penelope, need work. Uh, I like Penelope Ford, though. Like, I've seen Penelope Ford yeah. wrestle some indie, so like, I, I like Penelope before. She's I had know. some good matches, but her last two matches, have, three or four matches, have not been good. Feel like, she, like She's hella athletic. Yes. She's hella athletic, but I just, I don't know. She just. She, she has just, a Her headache. footing sometimes messes up and all that. Yeah. But I, I, I think I think the the bunny and Anna J need the more work, uh, because I could tell by the bunny trying to do the, the uh the curve stop the red velvet on them steel steps and that did not look good at all, <laughs> and uh, but after uh, after you know the, uh, the bunny rocked the red velvet with with, with thrust kick red velvet came back and hit a um a fl- a final slice. Uh, to the bunny and Pender, and she was hyped. J. Cargill stood up, and then now we're going to get that rematch between Red Velvet and J. Cargill. It ain't look. I'm glad we're going to get a rematch because they got history together. But uh, Red Velvet ain't winning that match. Well, yeah, no. Not if you want to, if you want to make a surprise and push Red Velvet, and like say she surprisingly beats J. Cargill, then she got to win the whole thing. Well, first of all, nobody's gonna beat Jay Cargill for now. Except, look, I'm telling you. So you think she, she's doing the whole thing? Yes. I'm thinking so too. If she loses, she loses in the finals, and it's a shocker. Because, because she won't be going to against because it once when, when she beats Red Velvet, she'll be going against Thunder Rosa. Yeah, so I think she beats Thunder Rosa and just goes all the way. Yeah, but I did. I think Dunder Rose will take it to her best match. Mm-hmm. I think that'd be good. So, main event time though, we get John Silver from the Dark Order taking on Adam Cole, baby, and with the Young Bucks on the outside. Good matchup by these two because John Silver, you know, it's, it's like Lil Cesaro out there got that little burst of energy, and he's strong. Is, he, he's strong as shit. This is a bit match, by the way. It's a what match? And they a uh, BTE bit match. So what, what does that mean? Explain it to me. It's a bit from BTE that they just took and just put it on the show. Oh, I got you. Yeah. Well, uh, like every week, every uh, week on BTE, every week BTE, uh, Silver and Reynolds come on to Adam Cole and basically ask him to do stuff that WWE was asking him to do. Yeah. Like we need you to cut your hair. We need you to change your name. We need you to be our manager. Stuff like that. Oh wow. And they changed the thing. They say, all right, we're going to call you Budge. So now he's got Budge over. That's Adam Cole is Budge. Mm. Even in that Ghostbusters song that they had, they, he said, I ain't afraid no Budge because that's what they call Adam Cole. God, dear me, I tell you. Uh, so uh, Joshua gets knocked to the outside. That he, uh, he gets put in the camel clutch. And then, of course, they do the trademark kiss, Adam Cole on the cheek and stuff like that. Uh, but then... With, uh, when it comes back in, we get John Silver uh, goes and hits a, 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 a Liger bomb on Cole for the near fall. And then uh, Silver is out there and just, you know, to just giving him a, a, a nice offensive sequence there that he just, just moved, moving around. And then, but uh, he, Cole tries to hit his to run, the, the, the running knee on Silver. Silver hits, hits him with a lariat. And then the, uh, the Young Bucks try to uh, d- distract Silver, but then Adico goes for the low blow. I like how Silver catches the arm and then turns it around on Adico. I was like, oh, that's a that's a good low blow block that a lot of baby faces uh, don't do. So <laughs> that's also I feel like it's a BTE bit too. But all right, uh, well, well, like I said, I I don't I'm still got, I'm still behind on BTE. Uh, but Adam Cole comes back, hits two two super kicks in the running knee, and it finally puts down Silver. And they and Adam Cole wins the matchup. So that is it for uh, Rampage. I thought Rampage was a, a good show this week. I actually thought Rampage at one hour was better, especially with the, with Kingston and CM Punk was better than SmackDown. Yeah, especially when they let them just go. Yeah, like obviously that whole thing was unscripted, but it felt like it felt like a real argument. 
It did. That's what I'm saying. So you know, with him and Kingston, and then and then him and MJF, like those are like the promo guys. Like I would love to see them go back, back, back and forth on the promo. So. Yeah, like you know how like in WWE where they wait for the person to finish. Yeah. Yeah, nah. Kingston and, and Punk was cutting each other off. He's a, 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 you know, a, yeah. a, that was a good thing about because it it's like no, no, no. You go listen. You listen to what I'm saying. Yeah. So. Uh, that gets the pass. So make sure you guys check out Rampage. I usually try put up the Rampage reviews on either like Saturday or Sunday sometimes, but you know we are behind. But so I apologize for that. But um, yeah, make sure you, ch- you check out check out Rampage. I'll try to put up early.